and sail in the tropics for an extended time? Are you wondering what to bring on the boat with you and what to leave behind? When Simon and I left land, we had four piles that we put the contents of our house into. One was trash, two was charity, three for storage, and the final one was going on the boat. With limited space on a boat, you want to make sure you only take what you're going to use. Furthermore, you want to make sure that what you're taking will actually work on a boat. This episode is on shoes, but we'll follow up with other videos helping you know what to bring on the boat and what to leave behind. So what shoes don't work on a boat? Well, first of all, any shoes with metal on them will corrode. For a while, you can rub off the corrosion, but eventually it eats the fitting. You can find shoes that have plastic looking metal and that's far better. There's also shoes that are canvas or material based. They don't work very well either. They mold very easily and discolor. They also stink. Simon and I went out one night and we kept smelling mold everywhere we went. Come to find out, it was the shoes. High heels are also another big no-no. They can damage your deck, mark your top side, and there are very few places or events where you'd be expected to wear such nice shoes. Furthermore, most land-based gatherings are on the beach, potholed roads, or grass verges. If you're seriously vertically challenged, I would consider getting some wedge sandals instead. Another shoe that surprisingly does not do very well on a boat are deck shoes. They're hot, their metal fittings corrode, and they're very slippery on wet decks and docks. The only thing that they have going for them is that they don't mark your top side. For us, that's not a good enough reason. And what about sneakers or trainers? Once you go without wearing socks for a while, it's actually painful to put them on. Many cruisers have sneakers set aside for hikes, but there's a far superior option. I'll explain that soon. So what shoes do we recommend? In the tropics, you'll actually be barefoot more often than not. So the number one shoe to have on board is actually no shoe at all. But that's not what this video is about. The second most worn shoe by cruisers are flip-flops or sandals offering more support. Ideally, the plastic or rubber shoes are the best. They don't corrode, mold, or smell. Furthermore, they're easy to wash the sand off, light to carry around, and finally, if you lose them, it's not the end of the world. Flip-flops are great for going into town on the dinghy, taking short walks, and even walking along the hot, sandy beach. They're not good, however, for gripping on the deck, hiking, or when using them in the rain. They don't protect your toes on the deck from kicking fittings. During a hike, you'll slide out of them, and flip-flops simply get too slippery when it's raining. Simon, however, has a special use for his flip-flops. Hey, Simon, you got an opener? Oh, uh, hang on. There you go. How sweet is that? There you awesome. go. Awesome. And now the best all-around shoe for a boater is a lightweight water shoe. Now, these are not to be confused with the cheap $10 shoes you find at a touristy shop that are supposedly made for water, yet fall apart after one use. A good water shoe that's available on the market for men, women, and kids is the L leader shoe. Whether it's sunny or raining, I use these shoes on the deck. They're lightweight, are made of a mesh so your feet really breathe. These shoes don't slip, unlike my deck shoes that have me flying all the time. So I use my L leader shoes on the deck and I also use them when it's raining or when we're going to shore for a walk, hike, or any time my feet might get wet. I also wear them when flip flops won't provide enough support. With the possibility for sea urchins in the water, I often wear the shoes to get the dinghy back in the water. I know my feet are protected, and I can simply rinse the salt water off when I'm back on the boat. The downside of the All Eater shoes is that they have large holes along the bottoms, which are great for support and anti-slip matters, but bad for getting little pebbles stuck in them. Whenever we return to the boat, I always wash the shoes and make sure to pull any pebbles out that got stuck. Another good shoe to bring with you is something slightly more dressy for those nights when you want to dress up a bit. You can either bring a nice pair of sandals or something like these patent leather shoes. Mold doesn't grow on them and there's nothing that can corrode. So our top tips for shoes on a boat in the tropics. No metal, gemstone, zippers. They're all going to corrode and eventually look terrible. If you're going to have shoes with canvas on them, consider keeping them in a vacuum bag to prevent them from absorbing moisture and getting moldy. Have a no shoes below deck policy to prevent scratches and sand getting down below. We keep all our shoes in a basket underneath the spray hood. 
if you do need to wear shoes for support, have one pair of shoes that are for the boat only that you never wear out. That way they won't get pebbles stuck in them and fill with sand. Do you have any comments or suggestions? Please leave them below. And if you like this type of video, let me know. Simon will be doing one about his cabin cave tools. The next one I'm going to do is one about bedding for boats. Make sure to subscribe to get notified about new videos and please make sure to head over to sailingbritican.com where we have hundreds more videos, articles, checklists, and anything and everything to do with buying a boat and sailing away. Thank you so much for watching. Just gotta stop swinging. We're just on the cusp of the sun coming through the windows. Alright, sorry I gotta scrunch down like this. <laughs> the sun is coming through the window and if I move, I'm gonna move the whole background and then I lose my consistency and that's probably important. Okay, for anyone who's ever interested in doing videos on a boat, it's really hard. <laughs> the boat spins and the sun comes in from a window and then you gotta close the windows and it gets super hot because you got no air. If the air comes through the mic and hits the mic, then you've got air noise. So anyway, I just solved my light problem by putting a there's a towel hanging above me.